Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a reveal for you and it is my new Saddle 23 uh, that I dyed green. So here, here it is. Um, I took the straps off, but basically um, if you haven't been following my channel, um, I got a white saddle or a chalk Saddle 23 um, last year and I wanted to paint it or dye it green because it was um there were some marks on the back and uh there was a monogramming on the front that i removed with um with sunscreen so that part was removed however it left like a blackish um sheen around uh around the monogram so it wasn't completely great um, at first, my plan was to go to Coach and do um, a bunch of tea roses in the front to cover the monogramming. But then at the back, there was the ugly mark and it still is there. This part was a bit like really dark after, um, after removing the denim marks on the back. So I figured it wasn't worth the money to go do a co Coach Create. Um, customization in this bag so instead I just dyed it green <laughs> so I have the materials at the back there as you can see there's acetone and stuff but I'll show you um, what I used for this bag and what the experience was um, if you're new to the whole you know dyeing a bag for the first time um, maybe you can get some tips out of my experience because uh, I have lots of lessons learned <laughs> in this project so anyway so let me just show you the bag first. Um, so now this is uh, in green. So this is like a dark green, almost like a forest green, I would say, um, from Coach. Maybe a little bit more blue than the forest green that they have in the original slime. Um, at the back again, you know, there's that ugly stain, but thank goodness it's at the back and you can't really see it um, uh, if you're just carrying the purse this way all the time anyway. Um, so that's the back. And then that's the the bottom there. Like I think it's a bit uneven in, in some areas, but I'd explain why in a few seconds. Why it's a bit uneven. Um, so I left the inside white. So there are parts there that are still white, and that's the inside part there. And that's the stamp where it says genuine uh, glove tan leather. So. On camera, it's a bit more yellow, but in person, it's a bit more blue. So, yeah, it's not showing true to color, but it looks better in person and camera. Anyway, so story of this bag was um, I went into Tandy Leather uh, to get some materials, and I got the um, this part, EcoFlow Satin Sheen. This is a finisher, so leather finish. It's also a sealer um, to after you dye the leather. So I got this one. And at first I didn't get the Fibings Pro Dye. I got the EcoFlow, uh, what was it? EcoFlow Leather Dye, I think that was the name, in forest green. Because I wanted a forest green color, so I thought um, it would work. So I dyed it with the EcoFlow um, forest green. But first I deglazed it with acetone, so. This is the acetone I used. It's 100% acetone. You will probably get a headache um, <laughs> uh, if you use this one indoors without any ventilation. So, you know, always, always open the window or do it in an outdoor setting because this one is really, really strong. Um, don't do your nails with that. I feel like it will also melt your nails because I went through a thousand gloves probably because the acetone just... Um, tore through the gloves like nothing. It melted it like, I had like holes in my gloves like really, really fast. So um, yeah, so always wear gloves and always do it in an outdoor setting or a well-ventilated place. Anyway, so deglaze first with acetone, deglaze the bag, uh, put the EcoFlow dye um, onto the bag with a, with a wool dauber. So this is a set of wool daubers from Tandy. Um, I mean, you can get it, get this from any other place, but that was already there. So um, it's quite inexpensive, it's like two bucks or something. Um, so yeah, so I spread the dye, um, wiped it with the cloth just to even out the, 
the color so it doesn't pool in one place. And I did that several times. However, um, after it dies, I feel like, oh, after it dries, I feel like there was uh, areas where it would be still a bit lighter as if the color wasn't penetrating. So true enough, when I, when I thought that I was already done with the bag, everything, everything you see in green here was already dyed with the EcoFlow. I finished it with satin sheen, and that's when I saw that the dye, the dye did not go through. So it just sat basically at the top of the bag, um, probably because I did not deglaze well. Uh, it's really hard when it's a white bag because, you know, you deglaze it with acetone, white on white, that gets, you don't really see the glaze coming off on the cloth. So... I was just like left with a bag that's splotchy in areas and it was just like, just, uh, it, it was just a mess. So I went to um, the purse forum um, and the ladies there are super, super helpful. So thank you if you're watching. Uh, they are quite experienced and you know, this isn't their first dog and pony show kind of thing with dyeing a bag. So I got a few helpful tips from there and decided that I would have to redo the entire bag because there's no way that that um, EcoFlow dye will stay no matter what I do. <laughs> so I went and dunked the bag in the sink with hot water. Um, it was I did that several times because I, I needed I needed to get all the dye off the bag. Um, so I basically washed the bag until it was completely not bleeding green anymore. And then I let it dry. I put conditioner on it so it doesn't get dried and then let it dry completely. So second trip to Tandy, I went and got this Fibings Pro Dye uh, in green. This was recommended by one of the ladies at the purse farm because apparently the, um, Leather by Coach are mostly chrome dyed or chrome tanned, I mean. Um, so there's vegetable tanned leather and then chrome tanned leather. I wouldn't get into specifics because I'm not an expert in tanning leathers. But um, the one that Coach uses is uh, like most, most of their bags, if not all, are chrome dyed. And the dye, the EcoFlow dye I first got was for vegetable tanned leathers. So I, I didn't really know what coat cheeses really so I, I thought it would just work but apparently not so this this stuff here is really really good uh after I washed the bag it was like really really gross green like if you can imagine an emoji the vomiting emoji that's exactly the green it was <laughs> and it wasn't even like even it was just like here and there here and there it was just gross so I went ahead and deglazed the bag again um, with acetone. I almost like went through probably half of the acetone bottle. Um, I had to deglaze really, really well. Um, and that's a very, very important step in any dyeing project is that you deglaze very, very well. Make sure that you're deglazing evenly as well. Because if you deglaze too much on one side, then the dye will penetrate that side more. So it'll become darker. So, so yeah. So deglaze well. Um, as it's drying, and you don't have to wait till the, the acetone is dry, it's actually preferable if it's a bit a bit wet still from the acetone. And then I dyed it with the pro dye, with the with those wool daubers there. So that's how I did it. Um, again, you know, any any extras um, that you see are pooling, you just wipe it in a circular motion until it's like even and then you let it dry and then you do it again the second time so the second coat um you just proceed with the dye no more acetone because that's going to take off of the color uh, so just do it as much as you want so the more coats you do the the darker the bag becomes so i reached a point where this is the type of green that i wanted so and i stopped there and then I just let it dry for a few days. Um, I made sure that it's completely, completely dry, that, you know, nothing's sticking to my fingers, sort of. 
that's sort of my gauge for for this dye project is that okay if it's not sticking it's not rubbing then it's really really dry and then I went on and um, finished it with a satin sheen this satin sheen is actually pretty good because um, it gave it a little bit of sheen but not like a shiny like sort of shoe polish kind of sheen it's just like a tiny bit there as you see and it also makes the bag I think softer at least that's what it claims on the the bottle um, but yeah so I did that I think I did it three times because I really really wanted to seal every single bit of this bag um, so when I'm wearing it it doesn't rub on my clothes and I've gotten to that point now um, and then after that when it was completely dry already I moisturized the bag with Chamberlain's um, formula number one so this is just a um, normal moisturizer it's not a deep conditioner or anything it's just to condition the whole bag um, and rejuvenate leather so so yeah so that has been the uh, the process uh, the, a few things to to comment about this bag if you're gonna dye a saddle 23 just just take note that these gussets here are really really hard to do um, <laughs> I didn't realize that it would be so hard. This part is actually not too bad, the big gussets, but the, this back gusset over here, and then the other the other side of the, the bag, like the back um, portion is really hard to get to. So, and also hard to dry because it's so um, tight. It's so tightly sewn that, uh, like here, see, there's a white part. Like I can't get to that anymore. I'm just like, I'm done. <laughs> I went through this bag. I started this bag actually in the fall and now it's winter and now I'm done with it. So it probably took me maybe all told five months to to do this bag. <laughs> and of course you can't do it all in one sitting because you, ha you have to let the dye really dry. So I recommend if you are planning a dye project that you know you set your expectations to be that it would be slow going it would be messy. You'd need a lot of rags and a lot of gloves and also um, a good work area that's well ventilated to be able to do this project. So those are my top takeaways for this for this project. So yeah, so um, here I also dyed a hang tag. There were two hang tags to this bag. Um, I just kept the other one as white. Um, I just put one here for the green and the the strap is also green, which is, the strap is actually the easiest thing to do because I did that last and it was just one straight go. <laughs> There's no gussets, no nothing, so it was good. Um, on the inside, you know, it's just the same configuration. One main compartment, the uh, another compartment here, a smaller one in the front, this tab here, and then the zipper pocket at the back, like all saddle 23s. So yeah, so now I'm excited to actually use this bag. Um, I'm not afraid that it's gonna rub on my clothes. I probably won't be able to sell it because it's a dyed bag, but maybe someone would want it in the future if I do decide to sell it, I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it um, as a reminder that, you know, don't ever dye bags again. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just say, never say never, but this one has been really, it was a tough project and now that it's done it's actually a big relief to me because I don't want my um, table to be occupied by this one anymore it was just taking space so I just wanted it done so anyway that's it uh, for this video um, if you wanted some tips or anything or if you have questions about any materials or that sort of stuff just leave them in the comments down below and Please like this video if you like it and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys later. Bye!